can we go ahead and continue our class now yes sir we can go ahead and continue everyone over here now now the next chapter which we are going to do is the last chapter in gst everyone over here it is known as the miscellaneous provision a c graded chapter maximum expected exam may question is three marks plus might be one mark mcq four marks they can go ahead and ask you maximum but sir sometime to your good luck they go ahead and ask now there are a lot of miscellaneous sections which are there in this chapter but the ones which i found are relevant means it is worth studying these sections i have gone ahead and summarized them and put it in one place let's go ahead and start with the miscellaneous provisions now everyone over here now section number 145 is there section number 145 goes ahead and talks about admission admissibility of microflames facsimil copy xerox copies of document and computer print out as document and evidence for an example in your place search and seizure happened and in the search they found some computer print out some documents can they be admitted as an evidence yes section number 145 goes ahead and says that a microflame of a document or the reproduction of image or a facsimile copy or a document facsimile copy means a xerox copy or a statement contained in a document and including in a printed material produced by the computer means computer print out or any information any information stored electronically in any device or media might be when they came to a premise they found a pen drive they found a hard disk then they are telling including hard copies made of such information shall be deemed to be document for the purpose of the act and the rules made there under, under and shall be admissible in any proceeding so officer came to a premises they found hard copies documents print out you are telling all these are useless these are all not evidence they are all evidence they can be used against you and demand order can be raised on you exam question what are the document and evidences deemed to be document and evidence for the purpose of proceeding sir what are the documents and evidences which are deemed to be document and evidence for the purpose of this act sir a micro film sir a facsimile copy or a sir statement containing uh, contained in a document including a computer printout or any information in a pen drive hard disk etc is always a deemed as a document and evidence and it can be admitted as a evidence in a proceeding next section number 149 section number 143 145 140, 146 sir baba those sections are there in your book if you want you guys can read it at home what i am telling is in miscellaneous topic i have gone ahead and covered only those points which i found should be not left by the student okay sir section number 149 GST tax, GST goods and services tax, compliance rating. Sir, the question which they can be asked in the exam, how shall the GST compliance rating be determined? Basically what happens, GST compliance rating, they are going ahead and telling every person who is registered under GST, we will go ahead and give them a compliance rating based on their compliance. So if a supplier is a very compliant person, he is filing the returns on time, he is going ahead and complying with all the provisions of the rules and acts, then he will be given a good rating. Now, when a good rating, 10 star rating is given to a person, that supplier say many people would want to buy because that supplier is filing his returns on time, he is doing all the GST compliances. Basically, a good star person will be a person with a good GST compliance rating. Yes, sir. Every person may be assigned a GST compliance rating score by the government based on its record of compliances under the return. Under the act, the GST compliance rating shall be determined on a scale of 10 on the basis of the prescribed parameters. So 10 stars, basically 10 up to 10 the parameter will be there and the parameters will up to 10 the scale will be there and the scale will be based on parameter is he going ahead and filing on his return on time is he taking correct itc sir based on your uh if you have gone ahead and done some fraud and all your rating will come down all these things a basis pay rating shall be given 
the next sir the compliance rating may be updated at periodic intervals and intimated to the registered person and also placed on the public domain public domain may they will also go ahead and put your rating so that people come to know whether you are a good person or not a good person whether to buy from you or not to buy from you then sir obligation to furnish information return they are going ahead and telling section number 150 goes ahead and tells a person should furnish information return sir exam question who are the person who are liable to file information return a taxable person a local authority other public body or association income tax authority banking company state electricity board and electricity distribution an electricity distribution or transmission licensee registrar or sub registrar roc recognized stock exchange gst and goods and service tax network all these are the people who have to go ahead and furnish information return okay sir section number 151 power to collect statistics sir who has the power to collect who can exercise when can he go ahead and exercise so exam question when can when shall the power to go ahead and collect statistics be exercised sir when shall the power and when who who shall exercise the power first of all it shall be who shall exercise the power and when can it be exercised everyone please change it to who shall exercise who shall exercise the power and when it shall be exercised basically who has the power to go ahead and collect statistics the commissioner has the power to go ahead and collect statistics always remember who has the power commissioner when he shall exercise the power when he considers it necessary for the purpose of better administration of the act basically whenever he considers it necessary he can go ahead and ask people to go ahead and furnish statistics okay sir point is clear next section number 153 taking assistance from an expert now if an officer is going ahead and doing a scrutiny etc and he feels that he wants a chartered accountant he can go ahead and take the assistant of an expert who goes ahead and tells him that you can take the which exception gave the power to the officer to take the help of expert section 153 taking assistance of an expert who can take when can he take and at what stage can he take who can go ahead and take the assistance of an expert sir any officer not below the rank of assistant commissioner may take sir when can he take having regards to the nature and complexity of the case complex case it is he is not able to understand it well then he can go ahead and take the help of ca cs cma ca cma if he feels them they are required the in the interest of the revenue he can take the assistance of the expert at any stage at which stage at any stage of scrutiny inquiry investigation or any other proceeding the assistant commissioner or above can assistant commissioner or above can go ahead and take the help of expert might be an it expert might be a chartered accountant might be a cost accountant next disclosure of information by a public servant everyone gst officers who are there when you file the return your return related information is with them they should not go ahead and disclose the information anywhere who told them not to go ahead and disclose the information here disclosure information what are the sir gst officers are not required to go ahead and disclose the information but sometimes they can go ahead and disclose what are the scenarios when they can go ahead and disclose what are the circumstances when information collected by the gst officer can be disclosed everyone over here yes the confidential information can be disclosed for certain purposes only otherwise gst officers should not go ahead and disclose your information to anyone but in some scenarios they are permitted sir what are the scenario for your prosecution for sending you to jail or for carrying out the object of the gst act or basically your information can be disclosed by them to another person when sir for sending you to jail for carrying out the object of the cgst act sir for service service of notice or recovery of demand for furnishing information in the court in a proceeding where government is the party government is the party you are in the court they will go ahead and disclose your information in the court because you have to go you have to be sent to jail so they can disclose your information in the court for audit of tax receipt or refund for inquiry into the conduct of a gst officer or for enabling levy realization of tax or duty in lawful exercise of power he can go ahead and disclose okay 
or for inquiry into a charge of misconduct of any professional. In all this scenario, always remember the GST officer can go ahead and disclose your information. Otherwise, your information can never be disclosed by a GST officer. Okay, sir, got it. Next, section number 159, publication of information in respect of person in certain cases. Everyone listen to me very carefully. For an officer, for an example, officer came to know there is a fraud supplier who is collecting GST but not paying to the government. In that scenario, can the officer go ahead and public publicly make the information available with respect to this fraudster? Yes, sir. They are telling publication of information in respect of person in certain cases. When question in the exam, when shall the particulars relating to any proceeding or prosecution be published under the GST law? Discuss the relevant provision. When they can go ahead and make public any proceedings related data or prosecution be published. That is, this person has been sent to jail. All this information, when they can go ahead and make it public. When the commissioner or author, authorized officer is of the opinion that it is necessary in the public interest, public should know that this guy was a fraudster, people should know about it, then it is necessary in the public interest to publish the name of any person and any other particulars relating to any proceeding or prosecution in respect of such person, then they will go ahead and make the details of that person, that fraudster, public. Okay, sir. No publication under this section shall be made in relation to any penalty imposed. They imposed a 10,000 ka penalty on me. Am I a fraudster? They will go ahead and put my name. They can't publicize my name. For penalties, they can't go ahead and publicize my name. Okay. Until the time for, they can't go ahead and do it until the time for appeal to the appellate authority has expired without an appeal having presented or the appeal, if presented, has been disposed of. Only after that, they can go ahead and do it. Otherwise, generally, no publication under this act shall be made in relation to any penalty imposed under the GST Act. So, they can't go ahead and say, Ramesh has been put one penalty, just like that. If they have gone ahead and sent me a penalty order, they have to wait before making my details public. They will have to wait. They have to see until the time to presentation for the appeal, which is three months has expired without an appeal or have been presented if the if presented has been disposed of appeal has been disposed of after that they can make my details public next sir rectification of error always remember if there was an error apparent from the mister apparent on the face of the record one order passed one uh, one order was passed then this order may there was some apparent mistake can the correction be done they are telling explain the provision relating to rectification of error apparent on the face under section number 161. Very, very important for exam. Sir, any authority who has gone ahead and passed an order or issued a decision, any authority who has passed or issued, a, issued a, any direction, order, notice, certificate or any other document, whatever is issued, may rectify any error which is apparent on the face either on its own motion or where such error was brought to it not, its notice by any GST officer or the affected person. I can also tell them, sir, you passed this order by mistake, you have written something. And the apparent mistakes can be corrected within a period of three months from the date of issue of the order. However, no rectification shall be made after a period of six months from the date of issue. Basically, period of six months, they are going ahead and telling, is not applicable in case of clerical error, arithmetical error arising from accidental slip or omission. Always remember, sir, within how much time they should go ahead and make it? Within three months, they should make it. But sir, maximum time limit they are telling. However, no rectification shall be done after a period of six months from the date of issue. Okay, sir. And always remember, the six month is not applicable in case of clerical error, arithmetical error, accidental slip or omission. In that case, whenever they discover it, they can go ahead and make the apparent mistake. Correct. Next, sir, in case of adverse effect on the person, always remember, they made a correction where my refund amount, which was 20 lakh, one zero was there. They want to delete it. Might be my ITC is coming down or my liability is going up. For an example, whatever it is, the rectification done, my ITC is coming down or my liability is going up. Then they have to give me 
and opportunity of being heard principle of natural justice should be followed if they are the decision basically the rectification is resulting in adverse decision on me it is adverse on me then they have to give me opportunity of being heard section number 168 power to issue instructions on direction sir exam question explain the scope of circular and instruction issued by board sir if the board the cbic who gave the power to cbic to go ahead and issue all this circular notification are baba all these circulars etc which are issued by the cbic the power is given by section number 168 whenever circulars are issued who gave the power sir section number 168 empowers the cbic to issue order instruction direction to its cgst officer for going ahead for the purpose of uniformity in the implementation of the gst act whenever the the cbic sees their two officers are acting in two different manner the cbic will go ahead and issue a circular that is basically guiding its officer telling its officers you have to go ahead and do it in this manner so that both the officers are going ahead and acting uniformly all the officers and other employees person employed in the implementation of the gst act shall observe and follow such order instruction and direction a circular is binding on always on the officers and not on the sc we are not required to follow we are not compulsorily required to follow the notice circulars issued but gst officers have to go ahead and compulsorily follow the circulars issued by the cbic and cbic issues the circular using the power under section number 168 section number 168a is the power of the government to extend the time limit in special circumstances in some special circumstances if the government wants to extend the time limit for filing of return for all the compliance then section number 168a gives the power to the government to go ahead and extend the time limit for an example now covid came in the last year in the last year this section was brought in wherein government went ahead and extended the time limit for all the returns etc by using the power under section number 168a the time limit provided under the gst act cannot be extended do you agree with the statement no sir i don't agree the government has the power to extend the time limit provided in the gst act however such power are not unbridled power section number 168a empowers the government to extend the time limit only when the action cannot be completed or compiled with due to force majeure sir flood have come sir natural disaster pandemic has happened and people will not be able to comply baba people are in the hospital how will they file the return in that scenario it is known as force majeure and due to force majeure hence force majeure means war epidemic flood drought fire cyclone or any other calamity caused by nature affecting the implementation of the provision of the act the power can also be exercised retrospectively and in all this scenario government can go ahead and extend the time limit because of force majeure because of all this war all this covid etc government can go ahead and extend the time limit for compliance under the gst act Yes, sir. Section number one sixty eight empowers the government to extend the time limit only when the action cannot be completed due to force majeure. Only when there is a war, pandemic, epidemic, flood, etc., government can go ahead and use the power under section number one sixty eight and extend the time limit. Section number one sixty nine is also very important. What is section number one sixty nine telling? Section number one sixty nine goes ahead and says what are the various ways. they go ahead and give you a show cause notice demand order how will it be sent sir service of notice in certain cases sir state the various mode of service of notice decision order summons or any other communication how will the government go ahead and send you summons how are the notices sent baba they are going ahead and telling they will send you the notice by first of all giving or tendering directly or including by courier to the addressee or authorized representative or to the or to the any adult member of the family residing with it, with the taxable person they will go ahead and give it to you directly or they will send a courier to you okay or by registered post speed post or courier with acknowledgement with due at the last place of business of residence they will send it to the last place of residence with, by using what speed post registered post or courier with 
acknowledgement. They will go ahead and mail it to you by mailing, emailing to the email address provided at the time of registration or as amended from time to time. They will email it to you or by making the same available in the common portal. They will send you on the common portal. When you log in, you will be able to see the notice. Or if all these methods are not possible, publication in the newspaper circulated in the locality where the address is, means I address is last known to have resided or carried on the business or personally worked for gain means whatever was the last place where I was working or I was going ahead and carrying on my business or I was residing that area may which newspaper is circulated that newspaper may they will go ahead and do what they will go ahead and put the notice if none of the above modes are practicable then they by affixing at the last known place of business they will come to your place of business which was the last known place of business and they will stick the notice over there last known place of business or residence and if such mode is also not practicable they don't know where were you residing for any reason then by affixing your copy thereof on the notice board of the office of the concerned authority they will put in their notice board and it will be deemed that the notice is served to you always remember what are the various service of notice how is the notice given to you those modes they can go ahead and ask you in the exam here we are done with some of the miscellaneous sections relating to miscellaneous provision everyone now everyone over here i want to go ahead and start with the last chart which is there everyone in the last chart which is again with respect to your chapter of miscellaneous provision only i have gone ahead and drawn a chart with regards to anti profit ring and national anti profit ring authority they can go ahead and ask you a small question so first of all let's understand what do you mean by profit ring and what does national anti profit ring authority do let's understand what is profit ring for an example everyone over here you used to go and have one masala dosa for an example one masala dosa in the market was 25 rupees then the shopkeeper ka cost was 20 rupees it means he used to charge you gst 3.6 percent 3.6 rupees which is 18 percent and he used to make a profit of 1 rupee 40 pesa you know what government reduced the rate on food item to only 5 percent 5% means still he is selling the dosa. Baba, tell me one thing. If government would have gone ahead and increased the rate to 28%, what he would have told me, my cost is 20 rupees. He would have immediately gone ahead and charged me extra GST. 20 rupees into 28%, 5.6 rupees. And he would have gone ahead and told my profit 1.4 plus 1.4. And immediately he would have gone ahead and made 20 plus 5.6 plus 1.4 27 rupees immediately you would have gone ahead and made it yes sir if gst rate would have gone up he would have taken the extra gst from my pocket my question is now if the government goes ahead and reduces the gst rate government reduce the gst rate then sir the cost of the dosa is the same gst came down you know what he instead of going ahead and reducing the selling price and giving me the benefit of reduced GST rate, he will go ahead and make extra profit. And the extra profit which he is doing is known as profit ring. And hence, there are sections which are there in your GST Act, which tells if you do profit ring, anti-profit ring related sections are there. And if you do profit ring, National Anti-Profit Ring Authority will catch you and impose penalties on you. Okay, I will give you one more example. Before GST, what used to happen? A person ka cost was 20 rupees, selling price was 25. He used to go ahead and make a 5 rupees ka profit. Everyone and the credit which was there was given only 2 rupees. Things ka credit which they used to get because pre flow of credit was not there, only 2 rupees ka credit they used to get. Now, because of coming of GST, free flow of credit is there. They are getting more credit. They are getting more profit. They are getting more credit. More credit means their selling price should come down, but they are not reducing the selling price. Are when you are getting the credit more, your selling price should come down, but they are not reducing the selling price. Instead, they are going ahead and making extra profit. And this extra profit when you make, 
it is known as profiting and in this scenario the national anti profiting authority sir profiting means to make unfair profit illegally anti profiting measures are introduced in gst to prevent suppliers from profiting and if any supplier does profiting he will be caught and national anti profiting authority will go ahead and penalize him yes sir we got it sir gst rate went up immediately selling price went out sir went up sir when gst rate comes down selling price should come down how much gst has come down at least that much selling price should come down if the supplier whatever gst has come down that much selling price he does not reduce then he is doing profiting sir earlier credit was less so selling price was this much now credit has gone up when you receive free flow of credit your cost is coming down it means you should go ahead and reduce the selling price but if you don't do it you are doing profiting and national anti profiting authority will go ahead and penalize you let's understand how for an example this person is going ahead and telling sir i went to eat masala dosa gst rate was 18% they charged me 25 rupees today the gst rate on dosa has come down only 5% but still he is charging me 25% this guy has a proof so he is crying where will he go everyone over here now whoever is the complainant who wants to complain will may, might be it can be a consumer might can be might be it can be an organization might be it's a supplier might be it's a trader might be it's a retailer whoever wants to complain will first have to file an application with evidence sir see earlier the rate of gst was 18% he was charging 25 now the rate of gst is 5% still he is charging 25 what is it it is not fair he will go ahead and file an application with the evidence always remember when he is going ahead and filing an application if he is filing against a party which is having a national impact for an example i have gone ahead and seen for an example mcdonalds is going ahead and doing profiting for an example classroom purpose only i am telling then mcdonalds as a chain across india and it has a national impact whenever you are going ahead and having a complaint which involves an issue which will have a na national nature which will have all india impact please go directly to the standing committee you have to go to the standing committee okay sir what will the standing committee do they will examine the accuracy and the adequacy of the evidences provided by the applicant whatever evidences you have provided and what they will go ahead and check the evidence to determine if there is a prima facie evidence to support the claim of profiting they will go ahead and check okay he has given this this document okay they will check the document then within 2 months plus 1 month ka extension can be given to this people by national anti profiting authority they will go ahead and forward the case to director general of anti profiting okay sir now the director general of anti profiting before initiation initiation of proceeding issue a notice to the interested party hey dosa seller you come here hey mcdonalds you come here hey complain and you come here tell what do you guys want to talk then he will go ahead director general of anti profiting will do investigation and he will collect evidences now he will go ahead and complete his investigation within 6 months plus 3 month extension can be given to him by the national anti profiting authority upon completion he will go ahead and furnish his report and upon completion upon completion he will go ahead and give his report to the national anti profiting authority along with the finding and relevant record now anti profiting authority will call both of you hey you come here hey you come here and they will grant opportunity of being heard to the interested party it can also seek clarification from the dgp if further clarification is required if national anti profiting authority determines that the registered person has done profiting it will go ahead and pass an order within 6 months okay and there they will go ahead and levy penalty everyone listen to me very carefully there was a person he had a complaint so he will go ahead and file his application along with the evidence where to the standing committee standing committee will examine the document he will they will go ahead and examine whether the documents which he has given evidences are correct or not and then they will refer the case to dgp dgp will further go ahead and investigate they will call you they will go ahead and collect details and they will forward 
their report to the National Anti Profiteering Authority, who is the final decision maker whether to go ahead and levy penalty on you or not. Okay, sir. For an example, sir, my case was relating to a small dosa seller in my state only. It's not having national impact. Sir, it's a person who is supplying goods only in my state. In that scenario, always remember if your complaint is of local nature, if your complaint is of local nature, you don't go to the standing committee. Go to the state level screening committee. Always remember, first of all, if your complaint is relating to local nature, then please go to the state level screening committee. They will go ahead and screen the data and then they will go ahead and forward the application with recommendation for further action to the standing committee. See, a, a complaint which is of national impact goes directly to them. A complaint which is of local nature will first go to state level screening committee who will screen and see whether this complaint is actually a complaint or not, whether the details are being provided correctly or not. And they will go ahead and forward the report within two months plus one month ka extension can be granted to them by the National anti profiteering Authority. Sir, for an example, one person files an application with evidence to the standing committee which is of local nature, then, then Baba, they will not throw the application. They will forward the application of local nature to the state level screening committee. State level screening committee will screen it and then give it to them. Now, what will they do? They will go ahead and examine the accuracy and adequacy. Same thing. And if they determine that there is a prima facie evidence of profiteering, they will go ahead and prepare their report and see to determine whether there is a prima facie evidence to support the claim. And now they will go ahead and refer the matter to whom? Director General of Anti Profiteering. If they understand, okay, there is a profiteering which has happened within two months plus one month, extension can be granted by the National Anti Profiteering Authority. They should forward the case. Once the case goes to DGFP, DGFP will call both of you. They will investigate, collect all the data within six months plus three month extension can be given. And then upon completion, they will go ahead and submit their report to National anti profiteering Authority. Always remember rule 144 says the quorum is minimum number of three people should be present in the anti profiteering Authority for a decision to be taken. Basically, minimum number of members which should be there for a meeting to be held is three member not decision for meeting to be held okay now national anti profiting authority after is received the report from dgp they will go ahead and check okay dgp says there is profiting hey you come here hey, you also come here he will go ahead and ask both of you talk both of you talk to both of you give opportunity of being heard to the interested party and seek clarification from DGAP on the report submitted. If he wants, he can seek clarification also on the report which was given by the Director General of anti profiting If National anti profiting Authority determines a registered person has done profiting, it may pass an order within six months. Sir, in the order, what will they go ahead and do? Always remember, in the order, they will go ahead and tell, hey, you reduce your dosa price, you reduce the price of your goods, reduction in price do it now they will tell you they will go ahead and tell hey whatever profiting you have done this guy is crying give it back to the consumers sir return to the recipient with interest at the rate of 18 percent amount equivalent to the benefit not passed on whatever benefit you have not passed on that give it back to the consumer along with interest from the date of collection you collected two rupees extra no along with interest from the date of collection till the date of return you have to give because you are using someone else's money and sir if eligible person does not claim or sir sir i sold thousands of people go masala dosa where to search baba don't worry we have consumer welfare fund put 50 percent money in state ka consumer welfare fund put 50 percent money in center ka consumer welfare fund consumer welfare fund we will use for the benefit of the consumer deposit 50 percent amount in each in center and state consumer welfare fund with interest at the rate of 18 percent per annum from the date of collection till the date of deposit they can tell you reduce the price return the money reduce the price return the money or they can go ahead and also tell you they can also go ahead and impose penalty which is 10% of the amount profited whatever profiteering you have done 
दैट अमाउंट का टेन परसेंट दे कैन गो एड एंड डिपोज पेनल्टी बट नो पेनल्टी इफ द अमाउंट हैज बीन डिपोजिटेड बाय यू विद इन थर्टी डेज ऑफ द ऑर्डर दे कैन ऑल्सो गो हेड एंड कैंसल योर रजिस्ट्रेशन non compliance with the order if you don't comply with the order they will go ahead and immediately start recovery proceeding if you don't return the money or you don't deposit the money in the consumer welfare fund they will hang you upside down and recover the money so just for your knowledge you can visit www.naa national anti profiteering authority ka naa.gov.in for more extra gyan okay sir point is clear listen everyone always remember sir screening committee will always ensure the screening committee ensures supplier has done actually the con uh, contravention of section number 171 which is provision relating to anti profiteering so they have gone ahead and done profiteering that has to be that has to be there only then the screening committee will forward the case to the standing committee sir always remember if national anti profiteering sees that okay ramesh has gone ahead and done profiteering in calculator it means might be it can happen that ramesh does anti ramesh does profiteering in uh, mouse also ramesh has done profiteering in masala dosa might be ramesh has also done profiteering in idlis so if only for classroom purpose i am taking idli dosa ka example theek hai everyone ha sir if national anti profiteering wants then they can go ahead and send the case to the dgp saying for further investigation or inquiry in the investigation he is telling sir this investigation existing investigation which you have done at dgp do it properly if on receipt of the report of dgp naa national anti profiteering authority is of the opinion that further inquiry on investigation is required it may record reason and refer matter back to dgp for further inquiry on investigation he can go ahead and send the case back saying i dgp director general of anti profiting do the investigation properly do proper investigation do detailed investigation then sir can he go ahead and order a new investigation to him saying that calculators may investigation done do for the mouse also which is supplied by ramesh then sir new investigation or inquiry can also be ordered on the if on receipt of the report of dgp national anti profiteering authority naa naa everyone naa has reason to believe that there has been contravention in the provision of section number 171 basically the supplier has done profiteering with respect to other goods services or both then it may direct naa national anti profiteering authority may direct dgp to investigate or inquire with respect to other goods they can go ahead and refer the case back for the existing matter or additional matter ke liye also the case can be referred back to the director general of anti profiteering sir what is the tenor of the anti profiteering authority how many years this anti profiteering authority will be there they are telling anti profiteering authority see gst has come now actually for four years we want to have anti profiteering authority so that people can be corrected after that people will not do all this thing they are thinking so they are telling that the tenor of the national anti profiteering authority shall be four years from the day the chairman enters his office national anti profiteering authority actually came into existence on 30th november basically when the chairman assumed the office from that day four years the national national anti profiteering authority will be there that is the tenor okay sir point is clear what is written over here sir national anti profiteering authority and the director general of anti profiteering what they can do they can ensure power they can exercise power to summon any person means these two people have the power they can tell hey, you come here i want they can go ahead and summon anyone okay sir what is it sir if excess profit due to reduction in gst rate whatever extra profit was there or the benefit of input tax credit sir because of coming of gst credits went up means the price should have come down if you did not go ahead credit went up by 2 rupees price should come down equally by 2 rupees if it doesn't happen then comments rate means same to same benefit if you don't i will pass on only 1 rupee 1 rupee i'll keep with myself this all you can't do if you don't comments rate benefit shall not be passed on if not sub supplier shall be guilty of profiting 
and national anti profiting authority shall deal with such supplier i have already told you what will the national anti profiting authority do here we are done with your chapter of miscellaneous topics everyone and i am done with my gst ka complete complete gst is completed over here i hope you guys enjoyed studying and revising gst with me yes sir we are done with your gst over here i'll go ahead and close my discussion on gst customs and ftp over here everyone congratulations people now listen to me very carefully for miscellaneous topics i will not be going ahead and doing the question answers why sir because miscellaneous topics ka question answer people see over here these are the question answers i have already gone ahead and covered all the question answers here only so i will be not going ahead and covering the question answers separately i will go ahead and close my miscellaneous topics over here everyone bye guys take care no sir bye guys take care